Hey guys, Dr. Isatel here for Juggernaut Training Systems. I'm going to be talking today a little bit about the basics of protein intake. So, just a little background on protein. It's one of the three macronutrients, including carbohydrates and fats. It has four calories, kilocalories per gram, which is a pretty decent amount, same as carbohydrate. Protein can be used to provide energy for the body, but it's almost never done that outside of the state of starvation. Most of the time, protein is consumed to be turned into amino acids, mostly digested in the stomach and then eventually taken into the small intestine. These amino acids are the key building blocks of protein. They're used to construct two basic types of proteins in the body, and these are the two basic reasons that we have to consume protein in our diet. Reason number one is functional proteins that actually accomplish some, some kind of task. Enzymes, for example. The very digestive enzymes in your stomach that help break down other foods you eat are actually proteins. They're made of amino acids. Parts of your, your cells in the brain, in muscles, in every single cell in your body, proteins are the molecular machines that do a bunch of the work. Super important, which is why going without protein for long enough is deadly. They're absolutely, it's an absolutely critical, vital macronutrient that you have to eat. So yes, we need them for function, but we need them for structure as well. Proteins uh, are composed of vital structures in the body, including to a large extent bone, has a protein architecture to it, and in a really big way, muscle can't overemphasize this enough. Muscle is made up so much of protein. The physical construction of muscle is so high percentage of protein that it's a very fine analogy to think of if muscle is a skyscraper, then protein is very like, very much like its bricks. If you want more skyscrapers, you had better at least have enough bricks lying around. And if you don't, you're not gonna have any more skyscrapers or whatever skyscraper you're building is gonna stop right there as soon as you run out of bricks. We'll come back to that in a second as to why that's important for daily protein intake. So the big thing for us, protein, yes, it's needed in daily vital functions, but it's huge in muscle growth and the literal physical construction of muscle. On that note, there are two ways in which muscle growth can happen over the long term. Number one, is there something called a fractional synthetic rate. Anytime you are building muscle, there's a rate of muscle growth called a fractional synthetic rate of muscle tissue. That is a demand for amino acids to use those amino acids to construct new muscle protein. If there are no amino acids available, then muscle growth slows down, and sometimes muscle growth can occur at the expense of other amino acids throughout the body, including other muscles. So for example, if you always eat plenty of protein on your leg days, but don't eat enough protein maybe on your chest days, when your chest is trying to grow, it's going to take away amino acids from the rest of your body, shrinking your legs, but making the chest bigger. We don't want this kind of sort of back and forth in the body. We want all the muscles to grow, which is why providing enough amino acids for that fractional synthetic rate of every muscle growth opportunity is vital. So one huge thing that consuming protein does is it provides amino acids for the fractional synthetic rate for the muscle growth component of getting bigger muscles. But there are two components to muscle size. It's not all about how much muscle you can grow. It's also about how much muscle you can save. Muscle is a dynamic tissue. There's always a big turnover rate. Some muscle is always being built. Some is always being degraded. It's a super important part. You don't want to block degradation completely because we have a certain amount of muscle, but muscle is a dynamic tissue that needs to be functional. We don't just stuff bricks in there, amino acids, and expect it to work. It's made of small machines. These machines break and they wear down and they need to be recycled. So there's always a building and a breakdown, but we definitely don't want that breakdown process to get carried too far because then we start losing more muscle, maybe even in the rebuilding. So a big part of consuming protein in your diet is to reduce the FBR, which is the fractional breakdown rate. If we can reduce the breakdown of muscle, if we can expand its synthesis on the net balance, we're gonna grow more and more muscle on average. Especially if you're dieting to lose fat, that fractional breakdown rate has a tendency to rise really, really high. And we wanna make sure that we don't have a huge fractional breakdown rate, and the best way to do that is to continuously consume proteins and get those amino acids in, slow that breakdown, and get as much of the building as we can, so at the end of our diet, even if it's for fat loss, we don't at least result in much muscle loss. We keep the most muscle that we possibly can. 
on that note, okay, so, super, so protein is really super important to consume. How much do we need? Is more better? We used to re all read bodybuilding mags back in the day or uh, watch YouTube videos and people say, you know what, brother, protein, the more you can have, the better. Well, that's true to a point. There is a certain amount of protein that's going to satisfy all your physiological and muscle growth functions. What about if we eat more than that? The problem with that is, we have a certain amount of calories you need to hit per day. Hit any more than that and you just get super fat. So we know that there was a certain amount of calories we have to hit. If we consume way too much protein, we're missing out on the very important functions of carbs and fats. So we can't just eat an infinite amount of protein. We have to cap our protein or approximately cap our protein at how much we actually need to get muscle growth done, to block muscle loss and get all of our other vital functions. That figure seems to be about one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. At the very top end, I can think of one group of people that need more protein than that, and that's natural bodybuilders in the last three weeks of their cutting diets before their shows. Maybe they need a little bit more. Almost everyone else, and including those bodybuilders all the other times of the year, one gram per pound is so much that it's almost certainly enough for all the vital functions and all the muscle growth and all the muscle loss prevention, but it's not so much that we're really gonna be digging into our carbs and fats too much. Gram per pound is a really good approximation, a really good start for most people. We can get more technical, but that's a real good start and it's gonna cover pretty much all of our bases. Can we eat that all in one meal per day? Probably not. There is a rate of muscle growth that occurs in, in all of the muscles of the body when you train them, and it's not a very fast rate. Your muscles can't double in size in, in an hour if you just eat 10,000 grams of protein somehow. The window of protein or amino acids coming into a muscle is relatively small. So if you overeat protein in one meal and you undereat it at another, that extra protein, that doesn't really go anywhere except for metabolism, just general energy, and also it can get put into fat if it's too many calories. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to eat protein every three to five hours or so. If you're really uh, not a, on the huge timing side of things, at least five hours. If you want to super optimize and make sure you're not losing any muscle, more like three or four hours. So three to five hours, you're consuming a protein bolus every time that gives you amino acids at a steady rate to prevent muscle loss. If you go long without amino acids, they're gonna to have to come out from other places, including your own muscle. So if you wait 10 hours, you're gonna lose some muscle. You might gain some of it back later by eating more protein, but probably not all of it. And to continuously supply the fuel for anabolism, for muscle construction, again, every three to five hours or so is a very good timing guide for protein. So every time you eat a meal, it should have plenty of protein in it, and your meal should be, oh, anywhere between three four and six meals, four and seven meals a day, something to that extent. Is there a special time for supplements? Yes, whey protein has been demonstrated to be incredibly fast absorbing and of an incredibly high quality. Whey protein is almost an ideal thing to consume, probably with some carbohydrates, right after most forms of high intensity training. Can you drink whey protein shakes throughout the day to any kind of benefit? As long as you're getting your protein sources from normal foods, it's probably not gonna help you much. Whey protein's not a drug. You don't drink it, you don't just explode with size, but post-workout and maybe some other times of the day, whey protein can be an advantage and a good quality product may be a good idea to invest in, but it's not magic. It's going to make a very tiny impact. The tiniest of the impacts, and kind of to close out the discussion, is where we get our protein from. So we know supplements are okay. Whey protein is a good place, but we can't use it all the time. What foods are the best way to get protein? Fundamentally, animal products are the best. Meat, milk, eggs, various types of meat, uh, of, of all the wonderful animals of this earth that we get to eat, fish and seafood and chicken and beef, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Every animal product usually has a higher quality of protein than plant products. Can you be a vegan and a vegetarian and still get super jacked and super lean, plenty of protein? You bet. Can you go as far as you could have with animal protein? By several percentage points, probably not. So if you wanna structure your diet soundly, focus mostly on animal protein. Plant protein is okay to have a little bit here and there to supplement your animal needs if necessary. That's more or less the story on protein. One gram per pound a day, stick to basic animal sources, don't worry about super details, you don't have to eat it every hour, and there are no magic super supplements of super crazy protein, whey is good enough. If you focus on that, you're gonna have enough protein to grow muscle, enough to prevent loss, and you're gonna maximize your long-term results, get as muscular and as uh, potentially lean by sparing uh, muscle as you lose fat, and you're gonna enhance your long-term sport performance as well. Thanks guys, Dr. Isertel for Juggernaut Training Systems.